Good evening. Welcome to Government Meetings Around the Town with Jolie Dunham and Jean Jacobs. Tonight we're very excited. We're here at the new Ulster County Law Enforcement Center to give you a bird's eye view, an inside view of our new law enforcement center hosted by Jolie and Jean and Sheriff Richard Bothaman. Come on in and join us. Don't go away. We've got an exciting time planned for you. Absolutely. Once again, now we are inside the new law enforcement center, and I would like to take this opportunity. It is a privilege to introduce Sheriff Bachman. Sheriff Bachman. Well, thank you for thank having me. Thank you for sharing this day with us and allowing us to have this tour. We would like to uh, turn it over to you, Sheriff, and give us an insight. Okay. Well, right now we're standing in the rotunda of the uh, Ulster County Law Enforcement uh, Facility, and uh, like I mentioned before, that uh, this building was originally designed to house not only the Sheriff's Department and, and our right. jail, but uh, other departments in the criminal justice system. And what you see around here behind me is, uh, like I refer to as a carousel of services that uh, the Sheriff's Department provides to, uh, to the residents of Ulster County. We have the Fiscal Commission Division, our Communications, Law Enforcement Services, and, this, and our Civil Office. Uh, originally, uh, when the uh, design of this uh, building was uh, given to the uh, legislators for approval, uh, it was mentioned by Rosser International that uh, they are a company from the South that uh, in their interpretation in the South uh, people have great respect for their government buildings. And uh, he presented uh, this general idea of this uh, grand entrance. Unlike in the North, unfortunately some of our government buildings don't have that kind of uh, entrance where uh, it would demand some type of respect or give confidence right. to the people that come here for their services. So uh, everything you're going to see in this building, uh, the design and the plans of it were approved by the legislators. Uh, they had the final work, word on uh, what was in, in this building. Mm -hmm. uh, and earlier I said that, uh, you know, it was always thought that this would be a center for law enforcement and criminal justice service in Ulster County. And up to today, uh, we already have several other agencies in here besides the Sheriff's Office, and that being the Ulster County Arson Task mm -hmm. Force, uh, Ulster County Stop DWI Coordinator, right. and Ulster County Traffic Safety Board. Soon, I'm told that the Public Defender's Office will be relocated here along with alternatives to incarceration. So we're getting that sense of a, uh, a center for Hi, we're justice. now in the main debriefing room. This is a room that Sheriff Bachman is going to explain to us, but it has to do with public safety, which is why we thought it was most important to bring it to you tonight. Uh, what well, we're standing here, Jody, is uh, um, actually the, the heart of the Incident Command Center that was designed and placed in this building. Um, this room would be used by the Sheriff, the State Police, and Police Chiefs throughout the county in the event of a natural disaster or some uh, large incident such as the uh, Hal Turner situation. Mm -hmm. Any of those, uh, those type of situations where all police departments have to come together and work together. Uh, this room was specially designed and wired. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it on the floor, but there are electric ones. Yeah, there's electric and data ports installed in the floor, so in the event that other uh, police departments come in uh, to coordinate these efforts, that they can uh, bring their their computer systems in, plug right into the floor, and go right to their their uh, their uh, uh, database mm -hmm. to run a situation like this. This room can also um, handle our communication center in the event that. Uh, the situation is large enough where we really need to operate from actually three different positions. There's a room next door to this that is smaller than this that the, uh, the sheriff and the uh, um, head uh, leaders of those departments can be away from all commotion in this room and make decisions uh, uh, that they need to make. And alongside of that too, there's a room where uh, the officers or the investigators are going on, on these details to come back uh, with their, their leads and report their information to the to the bosses in the room next door. So, uh, you know, this is just another unique uh, set of rooms in this building that, uh, at least in my eyes, is, is really an asset to the community. Of law well, it's also, it, it, to me, it's, it's something that's a sign of the times because you never know in this day and age with terrorism when you need to bring exactly. these forces together. And I know we've had flooding, we've had the Hal Turner incident, so it's most important that we have a place like this. You have a command center. There's also a, a movie screen or a, a screen where they can bring that if they need to watch anything on camera. Uh, and you also mentioned while we were off camera that you take much of what goes on. You tape all the incidents and the meetings so yes. that there can be no question uh, 
br brought forth legally or otherwise as to what's gone on. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, times have changed in law enforcement. We're in a uh, in a in a area where law enforcement must uh, cooperate together to to address these type of situations. Uh, uh, any jurisdiction that doesn't, uh, in my opinion, will will certainly fail. And uh, we've enjoyed a very good reputation with all police departments. And, and like I said, this room is actually a result of it. Um, so I'm very pleased and happy about this room. This is something that I hope we don't get to use, but in the event but it's that we do, right. Right. Uh, we're prepared. It won't take us long at all to, to uh, assemble and uh, get our wares up and running so we can handle those situations. Good. We're on to another venture. Hi, we're in the secure part of the facility now over on the jail side, correct? And we are in the command post yep. in the security office. Is that the security yeah, office? Or? Actually, this is the control room. The control room. Um, mm -hmm. What you see behind me here is the security system, which uh, controls all the doors, um, the gates uh, inside the facility, no matter where they are. This is really a two-man post. There'll be two corrections officers here working all those uh, uh, security systems. In addition to that, there's the uh, the fire system is located in here, and all of the, all the other systems that are located throughout the building. Um, there is also, too, and I'll show you later. Um, uh, a, a system that assists our corrections officers in the event that they get uh, in trouble or need assistance. And uh, what happens is that it's almost like a GPS system where mm -hmm. if the officer activates it, uh, it locates him right in the building and the TV cameras go right to where he is. So wow. he doesn't have to do anything wow. to come up here in the street. Everything here that's uh, behind me is recorded. Uh, so in the event that uh, something happens down the road that we can go back and secure those uh, tapes and, and review them and see exactly what, what happened. The windows are tinted so that uh, there's no, um, mm -hmm. no one on the other side that can see in, but the other mm -hmm. side can see out. So everything is actually Sorry, controlled sir. from here. Somebody's trying to call us on the phone now. We're, we're, where are we headed now? To one of the cells? Yeah, we'll go to okay. one of the housing areas. We're on our way to a cell. A cell. Yes, staff. We'll get right on it. Thank you. Here we are at the medical center at the law enforcement center. And this is most important because prisoners do get sick and often have diseases, correct? That's correct. And myself, having been involved in the medical health care industry, this is most impressive. And I think it's important for our sheriff to speak to this, uh, to this area. And uh, I think the community will be very impressed. Sheriff Hoffman? Well, we're responsible for the uh, health and welfare of all the inmates that are put in the custody of the sheriff. And what's nice about uh, this unit is actually going to sa uh, save us for county money. Uh, unfortunately, right now, when an inmate has to go to the hospital and there's any recovery time, uh, they spend there at the hospital, which is very costly, number one. Uh, number two, we have corrections officers that, are, uh, that have to be stationed there along with the right. inmate around the clock. So this gives, gives us an opportunity to bring them back here. They can um, spend their time recuperating here uh, inside the facility rather than a hospital where it's very expensive. In addition to behind, uh, behind you, there are four negative pressure rooms uh, and also a nursery for, we have two children on an average uh, born inside the facility every oh, year. Really? And we have our own uh, uh, dentist office where uh, you know we take care of uh, inmates teeth. Um, all this is uh, really basic care. There's a laboratory here for our medical staff and offices for the doctors and we also are responsible for mental health services too on the, on the back side of this is here for mental health services. This is one of the, uh, the areas of the facility that I feel is really going to make a difference in saving money for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a very good Okay, what we're looking at here is the detention center for those that are minor youth. So, uh, Sheriff Bachman was just showing us there's actually a room that the Kingston School District has set up where they can actually continue to teach our minors that are incarcerated here. Because remember, the idea is hopefully you can bring about a change in their lives so they're not out on the streets committing more crimes after they're they're gone. There's also, so we have an education room, 
uh, as you see, the cells are open, which Sheriff Bachman just explained to us that they're open during the day, and the youth can come down here. There's an exercise room. You mentioned that there was another room for uh, multi-purpose multi -purpose room. room for NA and AA yeah. meetings or, or any other services that uh, we can bring in here. You're absolutely right. This is uh, the minor housing area. There are 48 cells here, we can double bunk uh, with the permission of the Commission of Corrections up to 60. There's one corrections officer, um, which uh, this concept of direct supervision has uh, been proven all over the country to work with this 1 to 60 ratio. Uh, it's one of the nice things about this facility, uh, unlike the other facility, this is more staff and patient where we can watch, and I know it's sometimes confusing, uh, more inmates with uh, less corrections officers. Actually, the staffing will go up, but this is a much, much larger building. How does that work, though? That seems amazing to me that one, I know as a school teacher, I teach and I have one to 91 and I have great kids and it's difficult at times. How do you have, I know he wears a gun, that's probably the big difference. No, he doesn't. He doesn't wear a gun. Wear a gun. So no. how does that work? You have one corrections officer with 60 youth that are in here because they've done something really wrong. Well, we, as soon as they come in here, we set the standard. Right. We make them understand that this is our building, it doesn't belong to them, they're, they're here, they will follow rules and regulations, and if they don't, we have progressive discipline. For example, if uh, one of the inmates that are assigned here uh, does not cooperate with the rules and regulations, the corrections officer will can put in a quiet time, so to speak, you heard that, you know, back yeah. in your cell, you go back there and stay there until you can behave yourself and come out. So everything, every, uh, I don't want to say benefit, but every uh, uh, benefit that's given here is earned. You don't, you're not allowed to go out for recreation if you don't behave. You don't make your bed, you stay in there until you make your bed. Uh, we're required by law to give recreation at least once a, uh, one hour a day. Uh, or we can leave it open all day. It depends on the mm -hmm. way that they uh, react to it. Uh, go along with the program and abide by the rules and regulations, it's really not that bad of a place. Now one thing you also mentioned, I think this is critically important for us to know, as taxpayers, they don't get delightful meals, they don't get McDonald's, they don't get the big the big fixings. A Sheriff Bothman, Bothman explained that they'll have for lunch perhaps a turkey sandwich and at night they'll put a little gravy on it, they get 1,400 calories a day. So this is not a place where you want to come and spend a lot of time because it is certainly not a Taj Mahal. This is not, you know, you've got, it's, it's new and the basics are here, but this is not a place where one wants to come spend any significant amount of time. At least I wouldn't want to. Exactly, so. like I said, it's, uh, it's really a, a big improvement over our old building, but uh, one thing about this, like any jail, is uh, it's not the best place, but it's the only place. I mean, everything's going to be here. The idea of this is to keep the inmates here in this housing area and bring all the services to them. Like Jody said before, the menu here is a very basic menu that uh, across the board that meets all our requirements, whether it be a Muslim diet, diet or low in sodium. So it's kind of a bland diet. Uh, Good. Glad to hear that. I'm sure everybody out there is too. We don't want to think that, that we're bringing people in here and spoiling them. It certainly it's not that kind of facility. Yeah. It's really stark and uh, yet you're trying to do some things with education to, to bring about a change, especially in the lives of our youth that unfortunately will end up here. So that, that's a we're off to go, go ahead, are you gonna say something else? <laughs> that's a large part of it. As you see there's some rooms here, multi purpose rooms where we want to bring in services, uh, to help them and assist them transition right. back into a uh, productive normal life. That's uh, if that doesn't exactly. work, we'll be back again. Exactly. Onward. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Interesting. Magnificent. This is magnificent. I mean, it really speaks to a it's lot. It's not any place I'd want to spend a lot no. of time. No. Here we are in the jail cell. If you're a teenager, if you're underage, and you get Unfortunately, if you end up here, this is where you're going to be spending a considerable amount of your time, including meal time. There's nothing to this room. A little window. Right. I'll tell you right now, the mattress is pretty lousy. You have a toilet, a little bit of water, and that's about it. And this is what you would have to look forward to if, in fact, on the outside world, that there is something that occurs with you that would bring you into this institution.
Let me tell you, it is not like home. By no means. By no means. So. Claire, hi. Well, this is a good visit, though, but I gotta see you later. I, I think I've had enough of this. Yep. I don't like jail. Okay. So uh, I'll see you later. All right. Well, we're Do I get a reward, Sheriff? Please, please, please. Lock them up. <laughs> in the main kitchen. Um, I think it's important for the community at this point in time to hear about the concept of why this kitchen was put together and how many it can serve and also for the cost effectiveness and with the concept of the money that's been spent on the jail and how we're going to look to the future to generate revenue to offset some of the expense. Sheriff? Well, as we are in the main kitchen, and uh, this kitchen, as you can see, is, is quite large. The original concept, and, uh, and I certainly agree with it, is that in the event that our inmate population uh, increases, and it has been, over, right. every year it goes up, and uh, there's an addition in these, a housing addition in these being uh, placed on this building, all these support services, uh, the infrastructure of this uh, building will support those, that addition. This particular kitchen uh, can handle uh, 3,600 meals a day, which is uh, a huge volume. Uh, when we open up, we'll probably be in the 400 to 425 uh, uh, bed area, so we can handle that with no problem at all. Uh, currently, we contract food services with a vendor. Inmates will work and assist them in preparing the foods. Um, everything that, uh, as you can see, there's, there's some very nice equipment so uh, they made an investment now that I, I believe down the road certainly will, will pay off. One of the things that we talked about okay. earlier is the, uh, the bond for this building is about uh, $3 million a year. Uh, as soon as the, the building opens up, we uh, here at the Sheriff's Department uh, and the new Sheriff will be able to bring back all the inmates yes. that we have boarded out in other counties. Uh, currently we spend about uh, $1.5 million a year boarding out. And that doesn't include the cost of overtime and transportation costs. Uh, hopefully, uh, down the road, the Commissioner of Corrections will allow us to board in inmates, right. creating some revenue. And we easily can make another, uh, or the county can make an easily uh, um, uh, $1.5 million in boarding in inmates. Absolutely. So if you add the uh, 1.5 that we're saving by keeping our inmates here in Ulster County and hopefully creating some revenue, uh, alone that uh, the building will pay for itself. In addition to that, there's a lot of other things that are built into this building beyond that. As I mentioned earlier, that there's several other uh, criminal justice agencies that are already located here. We'll be able to get them uh, back in the building. And even uh, to help the community of uh, an area like this, uh, hopefully uh, they'll take advantage of uh, providing extra meals for organizations like Meals on Wheels. Absolutely. Which right now, uh, are kind of costly, and I'm sure that the contractor can do it for much, much less. Uh, we have a laundry service, a uh, laundry room that's next door to this, where we'll be able to do our own, own laundry in house, but right now we're paying uh, pretty expensive prices to get to farm that and those services. So that's out. a cost savings that's again. That's a cost savings again. Another. And again, all the inmates will be working in the laundry. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, issues and factors like that that uh, most people don't realize when it comes to this building that uh, when they refer to it as a jail, it's just, it's much, much it is a jail, it's part of jail, but yes, it's much, but much more. It's much more from what we're seeing here today. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to the garage of Sally Court. If for some reason I was ar arrested, let's say for drunk driving, an officer would come into this garage, the doors would be secured, and I would be brought into the following room. And if I needed to be decontaminated, if for some reason I got out of control, which I never would, and they had to pepper spray me, they would then bring me to this other room, wash me down, decontaminate me, and then bring me into the lockup. So the officer would then bring me, I would be decontaminated after I was brought under control, and they would bring me into this room where I would then be handcuffed. You see on TV, law and order all the time, all of the bars, there are no bars in this jail. Everything is a safe security glass, so you no more of the talking through the bar cells to 
you're loyal. You're actually brought in here and handcuffed and waited. Wait until you're brought into the actual booking area, which we'll go to next. So here we are. Ah, look, it's the sheriff has come to greet me after I've been arrested. So, sheriff, explain to us now, we're in the actual intake center? Yes, we're in the intake center. This is where, uh, when an inmate comes in, uh, their, their property is taken from them, uh, they're identified, uh, their commitment orders are checked. And they're processed and booked in, they're fingerprinted and photographed. And uh, this is where this all takes uh, takes place. This is fascinating looking. Come on over here, Tom. Let's wander this way. So just explain there are no bars. You said there are no bars here. Um, this, this is where the direct supervision concept will take place. This is right at the front door where we take control over the situation. If an inmate comes in, it's very, very unruly. Uh, you know, we're just not going to deal with you. We're going to put you in one of these holding cells right here. And when you calm down and when you're ready to cooperate with us, then we will begin the process. Um, there's actually two, two different types here. You'll see one has glazing at the door. There are some over there that have glazing on the bottom. Uh, those are so that we can get a better view of that inmate, depending on he might be um, intoxicated or in some uh, situation where we need to keep a better eye on we'll put it in one of those. But uh, if the inmate is unruly, doesn't want to cooperate with us, we'll just put you in there. And when you're ready to, to cooperate and behave, then we'll take you out and start processing. All that processing will stay, take place here at the three uh, booking stations. Um, and that's it. I can take you around the corner and show you hey. some more. I'll be hanging up front. Okay. Store all your your personal belongings. Of course, belongings I thought of some kind of a wacky use for yeah. it, but that makes much more torture sense. Chamber. Yeah, that's what it looked like—a torture chamber. Uh -oh. <laughs> Actually, I lied. There are one set of bars here at the law enforcement center, and this is actually bars on the shower in a special unit for discipline problems, or it could be the nature of the crime. As you can see, there's not much here. Bye. Bye. Well, now that we are on the second level of the special housing unit here, I will turn this over to uh, Sheriff Bachelman, and he will explain um, how an inmate arrives here and what is the consequence for the behavior. Sheriff? As I said earlier, that this direct supervision concept is based on um, your behavior if you happen to be an inmate here. This is our special housing unit. Uh, the difference between this housing unit and all the others is that uh, there's, uh, there are really no um, extras here. Um, as you can see, there's not uh, too much downstairs. Uh, if you end up here, you'll be confined in your cell for 23 hours a day. Uh, by law, we have to let you out for recreation one hour a day. Uh, we don't let all of the inmates who are housed here out at the same time, so there's really no interaction with, with other inmates. Uh, there are no corrections officers that will be uh, here. His post is actually behind some glazing there, and he can observe and take care of this whole unit from, from that post. Um, the windows are frosted out to let right. natural sunlight in, but the inmate cannot see out. So it's a pretty uh, a bleak place to be. This is where you don't want to end up. But if you become a problem inmate, someone that uh, needs to be disciplined, then we'll take all those uh, those little benefits uh, away from you and you'll end up here. And Sheriff, the current jail, uh, as we just discussed, they do not house or have um, this type of uh, facility. That's one of the problems with the old facility, one of many, is that we can't actually segregate, segregate a uh, it made it was a discipline problem Absolutely. from the general housing. So not only is that difficult for our, our corrections officers to control, right. but it has an influence on the other inmates here who want to behave and who want to get along with it. So uh, this is kind of a nice section because uh, it's actually there's 16 cells here, 16 on the other side. And, uh, you know, hopefully we don't have 32 problem inmates. Uh, right. And that's why we divided it in two. 
we can use the other side for, for other housing. Absolutely. Maybe uh, possibly boarding in inmates from other counties uh, to make that revenue. Which that cost savings would definitely be yes. there and increase our revenue. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, well, future Sheriff Paul Van Blarkham, I just wanted to say I beat you to the chair. Yeah. Here we are in the Sheriff's office, which I guess you'll be sitting here in January. Nice place. You're going to be a lucky guy. You've got a lot of responsibility, though. And here we are with our current Sheriff, uh, of course, Sheriff Bachelman, and in his most prestigious office. And, um, Sheriff, he can speak to your office. and. Yeah, let's it is, it is quite a room. I've had uh, folks come in here and say, oh my goodness, it's such a large, beautiful office, and, and go on and almost give it a negative uh, um, twist to it, but um, Paul uh, will be sitting there shortly, and uh, you know, he will be responsible for 285 employees. Absolutely. Uh, he will be the chief law enforcement officer of the county. He will be uh, dealing with three separate unions. Absolutely. And of course, he knows it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he's the chief law enforcement officer of this county. Yes. So the, the budget is uh, nearly $15 million, and when you have to make decisions, be responsible for things like that. Absolutely. These walls have a tendency to come in real, real quick. Real quick, they do. So you know, certainly, I wish him the best of luck, and uh, you know, we're, we're scheduled hopefully to have a transition here pretty soon Absolutely. and make sure that he gets off on the right foot and. Uh, well, just from the concept of what I've seen here today, um, you know, this office could be bigger because this law enforcement center is um, is a work in progress and in the right direction. I, I am most impressed.